Halloween started early. New England is windy, y'all. We are on the Ghosts and Gravestones tour today in Boston. They gave me two stickers, one for my group on the cruise ship, Purple 11, and one for this Ghosts and Gravestones tour. I'm liking the whole stickers thing, and I think that all tours uh, and groups should always have stickers. When she was little, she liked stickers too. I like stickers now. I will tell you the best stories that I can think of. I am still sober. <laughs> For now. I love our tour guide so and much. I found... Now I know you're all wondering, how did such a spicy piece of fish food come to be your tour guide on this very evening? Well, I will tell you! Ever since I was a child, I have always known that I was destined to be two things! The greatest adventure hero in any story ever told, and the center of attention. <laughs> and I knew there was only one way to be that to become the greatest pirate captain the world had ever seen. But nobody wanted to work for a scrawny kid with fibromyalgia, so I had to go about it a different way. Apparently, someone in this town invented zip lining in the 1600s and then told his entire town that he was going to fly. And then he did it in front of his whole town and when they figured out what he'd done, other people started doing it. And so now there's a law here that you are not allowed to fly or otherwise vault yourself in that area. And the law is still on the books today. I may have scraped my arm on the charnel house, which is basically, as our tour guide put it, do you have a drawer in your house that's just full of whatever you couldn't find a place for otherwise? That's what a charnel house is in a graveyard, but with body parts. There are so many people in that graveyard that sometimes they just hit other corpses when digging graves, and they would just take those pieces and throw them in the charnel house. There are also a bunch of marbles embedded in the ground of that graveyard. They don't know why they're there. Our tour guide's theory was that someone in a nearby restaurant got really drunk and threw a centerpiece full of decorative marbles into the graveyard nearby. I found three of them. The Boston Commons is one of the largest burial grounds in the United States. A burial ground is different from a cemetery because cemeteries are privately owned and you have to pay for a plot. Burial grounds are owned by the government and you can just put people in there and go home. I learned a lot on our tour. The best tour I have ever been on history and little known and somewhat morbid stories. Two of my favorite things. I low-key want to be a tour guide now. Architecture here is kind of gorgeous. Place to get back on board the ship. Low-key looks like a post-apocalyptic warehouse base. Tonight, I'm gonna see if you can play Dungeons and Dragons on the ship's Wi-Fi. Wish me and the internet satellite luck. I stayed up until 2 a.m. again in the Chamber of Jazz. I think this lounge has another name, but it's just been jazz music nonstop, so that's what I call it. Surprisingly comfortable place to play D&D and edit. I ended up moving into the lounge in the middle of the game, but it's almost 2 a.m. I should probably go to bed. I don't know what it says about me that I find it soothing when the boat rocks. The wind stopped. <laughs> I think it was a little stormy earlier, but it was so nice to feel the boat just rocking gently in the waves. Maybe I was meant to be a sailor. See, like I said, no one's awake at this hour except for the people who work here and the people who are weird, like me. Three roommates are sitting in their new apartment, two of them are dressed to the nines for a New Year's party. One of them sitting in her pajamas, she doesn't want anything to do with the party. This move's been hard on her. She wants to stay in, read a book, take a bath, go to bed early. But the two roommates that are going to this party are obsessed. They finally have this opportunity to go out, celebrate, finally be women in the big city away from their family, so to school. But she insists she wants to stay in, and so, they can see and they leave and suddenly there's a knock at the door. She thinks it's probably her roommates. Maybe they forgot their house keys or something and were coming back for them. So without hesitation, she lets them in in her bathroom. But before her isn't her roommates, it's a man. Standing at about six foot two in a fresh pressed dark green suit, his black hair slicked back and he was holding a camera and a measuring tape. As soon as he opened the door, he took one look at that girl. And he said, I know it, you got the stuff, kid. 
As soon as I took one look at you, I knew you have what it takes to be a model, and I have what you need to be a star. I just need your headshots and a couple of measurements, and I can make you the celebrity you were always destined to be. So she lets him in. Obviously, she knows there are risks, but she doesn't want to miss out an opportunity for a big break in a big city. Her roommates come back that night. Nothing's out of order. Everything's as it should be. Her bedroom door is closed. The lights are off. The bathtub's been drained. Even the record she put on when they left was back in the sleeve that had come in. And so they left her alone that night and the following morning. And when they went to work and only got worried almost 24 hours when they came back from work the following night. Nothing had been changed in the apartment, and so tentatively they opened her door. The only light streaming in was the light from the white gas lamps out on the sidewalks on that snowy evening. And inside, on her bedspread, with a pink silk scarf tied so tightly around her throat and an neat pink bow that she'd nearly been decapitated, was the gray, icy, cold body of 19-year-old Mary Sullivan, with a note card in between her toes that read in black typewritten letters. Happy New Year, Boston! Love the Boston Strangler! She was the 13th and final victim, and she was found here, two floors above the Barramount Deli in that very apartment, the final victim of the Boston Strangler.